Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to Understanding Docker for Windows video series. And in this video, we are going to talk about understanding Hyper-V containers on Windows 10. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Hyper-V containers. So in Hyper-V container technology, multiple container instances can run concurrently on a host. However, each container is run inside a special virtual machine. This provides kernel level isolation between each Hyper-V container and the container host. Remember in our previous video, while we were spinning up multiple containers, one with an interactive nano server and one with a detached nano server and one with just a run with a nano server something like that so we run three containers of the nano server image and those were running while we saw the docker ps hyphen a and you can see that while we were discussing about it we saw that these three are altogether three different containers actually running on a single host machine and it's completely isolated meaning each different Hyper-V containers to a layman perspective, those are a separate machines and this provides a kernel. So the Hyper-V containers provide a kernel level isolation between each Hyper-V containers and the container host, which is really cool. So can we see the image in Hyper-V manager like the mobile Linux VM as we saw in our Linux distro? Well, the answer is no, you cannot actually see the image as like the mobile Linux VM whereas where you can see the Hyper-V's running on a Hyper-V manager because we are actually spinning up the Hyper-V behind the scene but those are actually containers this those are not going to sit in the Hyper-V manager though right so let's see this in action to understand the concepts very clearly so for that I'm going to flip to our Windows 10 machine again all right, I'm back to my Windows 10 machine right now. So let's quickly see what's really happening behind the scene. So if I'm going to run this Docker PS hyphen A, you can see that these are the different containers running. We just spinned up in our last video. And you can see that the status of most of these containers are currently exited. Only one particular container is running. So what if I do this? What if I try to once again, okay, this is running one. So maybe I can just do this, run docker, run an interactive Microsoft nano server CMD. So if I run this, so this is going to again spin up one more container for me and it is going to run again. So again, you are just opening a completely new machine right now, just one line of code and pretty fast spinning off on Hyper-V. So remember those days where you want to create an image in a Hyper-V manager, you need to do all these sort of information and then you need to install the operating system. Oh my God, those are very, very crazy days. And right now with the invent of the containers and isolations, namespaces, this is really, really cool. All right, so let's open one more PowerShell or maybe I can reuse this window. So let's see Docker PS hyphen A. There we go. You can see that right now we have two containers running. One is in 15 minutes old and one is 35 seconds old. So those are running one. And if I want to see what's really happening behind the scene in this particular container, where is this particular container is actually running and how these things are actually working. So if you want to see that, you can go to the task manager and you can see the task manager, if you just come down here, you can see there are the virtual machine worker process. So this worker process is responsible for your virtual machine being spinned up. And this VMM, this is actually created for every container that you create because these are Hyper-V containers, right? So this is gonna come up for each and every container that you spin up. And let's also see what's really happening, how this networking is being happening here. So if I just go docker network and hit enter, oops, docker network ls, you can see that by default this net is being used in here. So if I want to see what is the information of this particular net, there is a command called docker inspect and there is a net. 
again guys these are something which we will be discussing in much greater detail in our upcoming videos of this course but don't worry about it yet i'll just show you in a heads up what's really happening behind the scene you can see that once i inspect this particular net i can see there's an ipv4 of 172 23 this is something an ipv4 address for this particular network address translation or the virtual network being created so i'm going to copy this and let's hold it in a notepad over here all right so this is just for information i mean this is something which i'm going to show you what's really happening let me clear the screen and let's once again do the docker ps hyphen a all right so these are the containers right so what i'm going to do i'm going to do see what's really happening within this particular container what's there within this container so if i do docker there is something called inspect right again if you don't know what is inspect you can just do in a help oops something like this it will just show you some information on these particular help so it returns a low level information on the docker object right you can just do the formatting string and all those information so this is going to show you the low level information so let's see what is the real low level information that we are looking for docker inspect and i want to get the low level information of this particular container uh fbc which is running right i don't really have to pass the full container id you can just pass fbc because those are unique and if i hit enter you can see there is some information coming in here so many informations but this is something very very interesting because if you just drill down a little bit here you'll tell that it is coming from this particular lock so there is a lock path for this particular container id and if you go here it's using the driver Vinos filter which we sign our docker info the one which i'm interested in i'm looking for is actually so you can see that the image being used is the microsoft nano server this one this is what i'm interested in you can see the ip address is 172.23.200.96 remember for the net i mean the net address we saw there coming from the vnic it is this the 172.23.200.96 so this is the ip address and this is the gateway being provided right it's pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw in the net there for our network right and if you want to see what is the another address for the another image that we have which is running here which is b90 i guess yep so let's go over here docker inspect b90 there we go you can see that this time it has an ip address of this so the earlier version has an ip address of this so this container has an ip address of 172 23.200.96 which is nothing but this particular container it has an ip address of 172.23.200.96 and this b90 has an ip address of 172.23.200.97 i guess right if i come down a little bit no 201.7 and this ip address is also going to change so for every container the ip address is also changing so you can see that this images that we are seeing right here are completely isolated they're completely different their networks are isolated their processes are also isolated because they are running in different hyper v containers and everything is completely isolated here we'll talk more about these concepts like isolation and all those all those stuffs while we start digging into the Vino server container in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, just be informed that the Hyper-V container provide a complete isolation for each and every containers that you run, and they are completely independent right now, right? So this is what is really happening behind the scene. So in our next video, we'll actually try to run a IS image, and that you can go to the hub.docker.com in the nano server so instead of the nano server you can actually choose the one with the internet information server so let me go to this microsoft and let me go here to the is you can see here so you can go in here and go to the tags 
The one which we are looking for is the Nano Servers IS, right? It is 324 MB. So it will take a while to download. So I will download it for now in this particular video itself so that when you come back in our next video, you will see that the Nano Servers IS will be available. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.